Hey everybody, my name is Jim Farmer. I am a reporter for Georgia Voice. Also coordinate Out on Film, which is Atlanta's LGBTQ Film Festival. I'm very, very excited today to have a very special guest. The new film, Truman in Tennessee, an intimate conversation, is a fascinating new film looking at the lifelong friendship between legendary writers Truman Capote and Tennessee Williams. It is opening around the country and opens in Atlanta on June 25th. Please welcome the director of the film, Lisa Imardino Breitend. Hi, Jim. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, I watched this film last night and it is absolutely fascinating. Oh, good. Thank you. I, I'm just thank, you, thank you. Thank you. How long did you work on this? <clears throat> you know, I would say I worked on it maybe two years. Okay. Yep. What made you want to tell the story? Um, <laughs> excuse me. What made me want to tell the story? You know, I really wanted to highlight the talent of Truman, Tennessee as writers. Sure. Because I think it's something that has been forgotten in a lot of ways, because I think they're characters of these, <coughs> excuse me, these kind of bigger characters of themselves of toward the end of their lives where they were really primarily addicts, just, you know, kind of recast their legacy in a very odd way. And I really wanted to highlight the words of these great men. Okay. Um, I, was, I was really taken aback by all the tremendous footage you got. How hard was it to get all that footage? Well, you know what? I think that's one of my favorite aspects of filmmaking is really finding footage. I love our archives. I'm a complete nerd. I love to sit down in libraries. Something I haven't done in a while because of yeah. and, um, But I like to discover things. I mean, I think all filmmakers do. And, um, and I, I was able to find, um, you know, the, um, first of all, there was the David Frost interviews, which were so important. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, and that really, that really kind of gave us this launching pad to be able to go off on all these different conversations. Of course, Dick Cavett is incredible you know we created a lot of our own footage mm -hmm. as well and we we created we created a lot of footage with the just with the bollocks i work with an incredibly talented uh dp by the name of shane sigler who i often work with and um and we really had a very clear idea on what we wanted visually in the film because you know when you have these you know i, I knew that the film needed to be embedded in the words mm -hmm. of two writers and the, and just the thought of having this, the richness of these words to be able to be the narrative arc of the whole story. You know, I wanted all the visuals to be layered and to be, and kind of create this dreamscape and this world that was always moving. And so we were moving with their words. And then we had these incredible voiceovers by, by you know, Jim Parsons and Zach Quinto. And um, so it was quite, it, you know, we, we had the luxury of a lot of wonderful, uh, assets to be able to work with. Exactly. Can you talk briefly about the relationship uh, between the two writers? Sure. You know, of course, Tennessee was older than than Truman, um, and he. You know, they both had this desire to write from a very very young age, and you know, we we also saw these immediate parallels. I mean, they had a friendship. They also had a competitive edge, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mean, I think we need to be able to. We need to remind people that this whole world was much smaller back then, and yeah. so that that's the first thing. Because you know, if you, if you think about um, both of them, I'm, you know, Truman was mostly New York based, but he also had a very strong expat life. He, he had a house in Verbier. He would spend time in Italy. Tennessee spent a lot of time in Rome. In fact, he lived there for for many many years. Mm -hmm. uh, but so they had they shared this kind of vision of or this life, this expat life, which is is a life that's very important to me because I actually led that lived that life. And um, so they had that. They had um, the writing that was a common that was something common. And then they also shared a lot of the same friends. And and that was and that's not something that we brought up that much because, you know, in, in a story like that, this, we really try, we wanted to try to keep, it's always, I think in these documentary films, you're trying to create a, keep a focus because there's so much one could talk about, but we really wanted to, we had certain topics and we wanted to also be able to make sure we focused on the creative process of writing and what it did to them and what, how it made them think and also how it made them kind of go down the past path of destruction in their life, um, just to kind of keep it going. And, um, and so there were many things that they they did um, 
meet up on, but they also were very lived, they lived very, very separate lives. They were not best friends. I mean, there, in no way was there a time that they were best friends, but their, their lives were just kept kind of merging like this and crossing over each other. And it was a really fascinating way to be able to create a film, to be able to, to see how it just kind of kept kind of merging and they kept, and I think Truman as a friend, pretty tricky. You know, because he always had this competitive edge and he was always very unhappy with himself. And Tennessee Williams also was unhappy with himself. I mean, he always suffered from depression, but mm -hmm. he was really open about it. Sure. You know, I think Truman must have been a very divisive type of human being. And you never really knew if you were getting the real Truman Capote. Because I'm not quite sure who the real Truman Capote is after all of this. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do a biographical film on either of them here. Sure. So I don't know, did I answer your question? Yeah, the, the documentary does an amazing job at looking at the complex relationship between the two, because as you mentioned, they were friends, they were colleagues, but there was you know, some competition there. But can you talk a little bit about um, you know, the similarities between the two? Well, so the similarities, both from the South, mm -hmm. okay? They both were writers. They both had this desire to write from a very young age. They both came from broken or from homes that were parents were not there for them. So, you know, in Truman's case, you had, you know, didn't have a father that was present in any way. You had a mother who would actually lock him in hotel rooms. Um, he was brought up by his aunts. Uh, in Tennessee's case, a father who was in no way supportive. A mother who really, whose interest was elsewhere, his grandparents would spend give him the special attention. So they, they, they were not showered with love from a young age. So when you're not showered with love from a young age, I think it just kind of shakes the backbone of your persona. And, uh, and so there, there was that aspect that they both shared. Then of course, there's the issue that they each had a parent who was an alcoholic, which is a really, it's a huge thing. And that was something we did not want to shy away from because back then it wasn't really addressed in any way. And we really wanted to talk about it here. And then of course they were both gay. And you know, and that was another similarity. Sure. And they both had a desire to express their inner feelings on paper. Okay. And at and um, which they did. And they both did it different ways because Tennessee was always very and that's what what that's what's such a it's such an important contribution that he has made to the literary world and to the theatrical world by showing how it, you can show feelings out there. Um, with, but and Truman's contribution was slightly different, uh, but it was also important. You mentioned, uh, obviously, these, these two writers were gay. They were gay at a time in which it was really tricky to be gay. Can you talk a little bit about navigating that? And they were, both of them were very unapologetic about who they were. Yeah, yeah, no, listen, it was incredibly courageous, incredibly, incredibly courageous. And I think that, you know, in, you could see that Tennessee was much more open about his feelings and he also needed that. He, he kind of thrived for companionship. I mean, I think that he was also a sex addict. I mean, in his journals, he, he really talks about how he would go out cruising and he would have to have multiple partners. And, and I love that. I mean, I kind of, I, I loved how he was so open about it. It was just so important. And, and you could also see in that moment of discomfort, but so wonderfully revealing with David Frost that, you know, they're talking, they're, tr they're trying to talk about friends and sex and da, 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 da. And, and Truman, you know, Truman had, his sexual life just did not feel as important. It really didn't while with Tennessee, he was, but that's, that was part of, that's I think why I fell in love so so much with Tennessee that there was just this kind of openness to him. He's just kind of revealed okay. himself. Like warts and all, it didn't matter. And with Tennessee, you just never, I mean, with Truman, excuse me, you just never knew if you were getting the real person there. And um, and so they were very, very open about the sexuality. Was it, was it approved or accepted by their parents? Definitely not. Um, and, and of course, Tennessee had the issue of censorship with his work. Uh, because he talked about sexuality, he talked about a lot of different things, and you know, and we didn't we didn't delve into that into the film because there's there's so many there's so many things that one you know topics that one could delve into more, and it's it's just hard because you have to kind of just decide this is what we want to what, what we want to talk about. 
Um, and, and also, you know, they both had long-term relationships, which we do discuss. And, you know, Jack Dunphy, with, who was Truman's long-term partner, was, um, it was an important relationship. But it also really did, it ended, and he was really there just as a friend. And, you know, of course, Tennessee's really important uh, relationship, Frank Rallo, was something that, you know, devastated him when he died of cancer. There, you know, th these are two figures who were obviously very well known, and it, we we all know, a, you know, about these characters. There's so much that I learned from this. Film. I was just amazed. It's like I never knew this, or I never knew that either. Oh, I'm Whoops. so happy! I'm so happy. Then we succeeded. It is. What surprised you the most as you started doing your research about these two? Um, let's see, because you know, I never pretend that I'm the expert on any of these subjects, and that's why you know, they're. They're great writers who have written biographies on them. And, you know, I go in and I try to give an idea, kind of a, a, a different version of the stories. So it's, my, it's my own version of storytelling. And um, I did not know that much about Tennessee. So his world was completely open to me through this research. And I fell deep and hard for him in, in a lot of different ways. And, um, and I, I think that... What touched me the most, because um, I think it's a reflection of probably the way that I lead my life, is that I really, uh, this transparency with which uh, Tennessee lived his life, his, his honesty of approaching everything was really profound and important. So he not only did it within his own, <clears throat> excuse me, personal writing in his journals, but he did it on stage. It, that's, that's important to me. It taught me also the fact that with Truman, I really, there was always a veneer of truth in his life and I don't like that as much. Okay. The documentary features vocal talent from Jim Parsons and Zachary Quinto. How, how were you able to get Jim and Zachary? <laughs> oh, excuse me. You know, they were very, very generously um, agreed to do this. And I do think because we were all in, isolation in some way and <laughs> pandemic related life. We were, um, <clears throat> luckily they decided to join in, but I think it's because they also, these two men really meant something to them in their lives and their story. And, um, and you know, of course, Zach has acted in Tennessee William plays. And, you know, Jim has grown up with, you know, reading Truman Capote as a young boy. And they both they both knew both writers very well, and I think that they really this moment of time that we all were looking in on, onto ourselves. This was kind of a like, studious look at these writers and a way to be able to express themselves and to express themselves through not it's it's not scripted content. It's the real words of these writers. And I think that that was a really attractive asset for both Jim and Zach, because this was not, this is what they said. And, um, and in, our pro in the process of doing the voiceovers, it was really about expressing the emotions that they were feeling. Okay. What's it like, the last year and a half has been difficult for everybody in so many ways but what's it been like for you as a director with a new project that you're looking forward to getting out into the world and having to wait a little bit of time to do that you know i have to say um i am so happy to find this movie i really yeah. am and i don't you know i don't really consider myself part of the film world i do my thing um and the whole festival process is a process I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. I love being able to sit and talk with the audience about something because it's I always learn from this whole that this whole time and and it's been it's been sad for me. I mean not not sad, but I've missed it because this is a film that you can really talk about things. Mm -hmm. And you can talk about in a profound fashion about sure. the relationship. And so I've I've I definitely have missed it. And um and sure, of course, we have Zoom, but Zoom is not the same thing. You know, it's really not. 
And um, so I, I'm, I'm sad that it hasn't happened, but I'm just happy it's getting out there and that people are enjoying it. And um, so it's, it's exciting that it's finally, like, because you know, it was supposed to be in Telluride last year. And so it kind of it moved on. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I love all sorts of films, but I have to say, everybody who knows me knows that documentaries are my jam. But what is it about documentaries that, that fascinate and intrigue you so much? Well, you know, I, I studied art history, so I mean, I don't come from any of that background. But, you know, I, I think it's the whole idea about, I feel fortunate that I can take on these different topics or subjects and learn about them and break it down. Because, of course, Everybody, if you gave, if you gave five different filmmakers or writers or curators um, the same material that I used for this, we all would come up with a different story. And um, and I really am trying to tell a story and trying to give a a different, a redefining them for a different, a, a younger generation right now, trying to make it in a in a way digestible yet and and entertaining to them. Um, and, and also to be able to highlight certain things for an older generation, from my generation and above, and show them something that they, they never knew about Truman or Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I love the process. I, I love the research. I really, really, really love the research. And I mean, I'm a complete nerd. I mean, I do it all myself. It's not assigned out to, you know, to researchers. And, um, but it's, you know, how lucky am I to be able to do it actually? Because it's, you know, and it all, I kind of keep it all in my head, but I also have that horrible thing that once it's done, it dates, things like that, they're just gone, okay? It's like, you ask me when anybody's born, I, I was like, forget, I have no idea. Um, but I just, I love the process. I mean, I have piles of books here for my next film. And I just, it just this, is, this is kind of my thing. Great. You mentioned your next film. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I think I'll be doing Gertrude Stein. Oh, wow. Wow. I, I like the word. I like words. I like working uh, with words right now. I mean, where are you? Where are you in the process? Are you are you early? Are you mid film or where are you with that? Uh, we haven't shot yet. We'll shoot this fall. Um, but we're we're in the middle of the pile, let's say, of the books. Yeah. So we have we have more to do. That's for sure. I am very, very excited about that. The film is Truman in Tennessee, an intimate conversation. It opens around the country in Atlanta on June 25th. It is fascinating. I'm sure you'll love it. It will eventually be on streaming as well. Please, um, thank you for joining us, Lisa Imordina Vreeland, and um, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Jim. Thanks so much.